Hey everyone, it's Tim from TimGonier.com. Uh, it's been a little while since I've made a YouTube video. Uh, I've only kind of made a few here and there over the past six months or so. Uh, well, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna start putting out some more videos. And what I wanna start doing is uh, creating some overview videos starting today with this painting. Uh, what I wanna do is kind of give you an overview of my approach. Uh, some color choices, and what I'm thinking as I do the painting. So hopefully that will help you out with your painting techniques, uh, give you some ideas, uh, and things like that. Also, if you want full-length painting lesson videos, make sure you check out my website, timgonier.com. Uh, the link will be posted here in the video, uh, throughout the video. So if you get a chance, make sure you go on over and check out timgonier.com. I have hundreds of videos. Uh, online and on DVD, as well as brush sets. Okay, so let's get to this painting. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you post those below, and you can click on the description of the video to check out the, uh, the colors that I used for this painting. Okay, to start out, what I usually do, especially with these storm-type clouds, is figure out the direction in which the clouds are gonna flow through the sky. So, I like to, you know, kind of channel your inner anger for these, use a nice dark color, um, create some movement, and what I'm focusing on is just creating the shadows and some unique shape, like I said, creating that direction of the clouds in which they're rolling over the hill. Then I like to throw in just a horizon line, a little bit of a hill here uh, coming down from the cloud, and again we're really trying to create brush strokes that indicate movement. Uh, I'm not really focused on creating clouds yet. We're just uh, focusing on mostly just the shadows. And uh, by creating these nice brush strokes that have a lot of movement to them, it's going to translate later on into clouds that look like they're rolling. Okay, now I'm going to start throwing in some lighter values. And what I do is, um, you can see I made some layers of shadows. Now I'm going to fill in in between those where I have the open canvas. I'm going to fill in a lighter value. I'm not going really light, just enough so I can see the difference between the shadow portion of the clouds and the highlight portion. Uh, the clouds in the distance, I try to put a little bit more of a cooler color and then clouds in the foreground a little bit warmer. And that will help create some distance. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. This is where you take it from a kind of abstract painting into something that looks a little more like clouds. We're taking a large brush and we're blending all of these wet colors together and softening all of the edges. So you can see lots of different directions in the brush stroke. 
Um, this is kind of where you start to create the movement a little bit by blurring out all of those dark pieces into the light pieces. It's the magic of oil, uh, it doesn't dry very fast, so you have a lot of time to just work the color around and feather it together. Okay, now I want to darken the shadows even further by using a little bit of a purplish hue, um, using a little bit of uh, phthalo blue and alizarin crimson here. And basically I'm just going over the exact shadows that I already created, adding in this bluish purplish haze. And I'm going to blend it together with the kind of greenish teal haze that I put on there. And what's going to happen is going to create a really nice natural gray. And then I'll blend this all together just like we did before with a large brush just using uh, light pressure as I pull that all together. Okay, again, so I'm just using the large brush, um, using a little bit of pressure there to bring that into the other colors. And if you, as you pick some up on the brush, some of that purple, and kind of spread it out through the clouds as well and that will help harmonize everything together. Okay, now comes the harder part. So what I did is took some of my cloud color and lightened it up with some white, um, put a little bit of alizarin in there, maybe a little bit of teal. But it's mostly, mostly just a lighter version of our cloud color. What I like to do is create contours that are darker. So I'm basically cutting out the contour from that already dark color using the light color. So you can see I left that dark uh, contour on the right there, then take my large brush and blend the lighter color out so there's no brush strokes. Again, doing the same thing over here. Um, what I'm trying to do is kind of cut out a piece of cloud that's kind of out in front, a billowing piece of the cloud. So you can see I cut it out with the light color, blend out any of the edges, and then continue that process throughout the cloud. Sometimes I'll go uh, smaller contours, sometimes I'll go larger contours, but I don't want to overdo it. I want to try to keep these clouds relatively dark, um, but you do want to create some depth, so you have to have some light in there. So you're cutting out small bits of contour with the lighter color, blending it out with the large brush, and then continuing that throughout the painting. Then with a lighter, cooler color, I like to use teal or blue. Um, what I want to do is cut out an open piece of sky in the distance. We always want to put some sort of light or positive energy in a darker painting like this. So opening up the sky here in the distance, flat, a nice flat little piece. Uh, you can even create another little hill way off in the distance uh, by cutting out the sky a little bit higher than on the horizon. What that does is it leaves just a really distant mountain and you want to make sure you blend it out lightly with your brush. Okay, so then with a darker color, what I want to do is fill in that last bit of canvas that's on the bottom. Uh, nice dark color. We're using the same hues as we did in the back. 
what I like to do is call this uh, cutting trees into the hills. So basically I'm taking that dark color using a wet on wet technique using vertical brush strokes with a flat brush and just going up and down the hills and you'll see what I do is once I get a tree line in here off in the distance I'll start cutting down into that darker color and pushing it up into the color above it. So I want to continue doing that vertical brush stroke until the paint kind of runs out going up the hill. Now I'm cutting into the darker color going up and down same type of thing, just leaving the tips of the trees a little bit lower, so that way it creates some distance. So we're cutting that nice wet color out front into everything around it. Now you can see a little bit further into the painting how that works. You want to go uh, up the hill. We're cutting up the hill. Then with a liner brush, we're going back to that really dark color and we're going to slowly paint in some fir trees or some pine trees. Just start with a little bit of a line, use the point of the brush to create the branches and keep working your way down and it will fade into the wetter color below it and that will create a little bit of atmosphere and distance. And we'll throw in a bunch of these trees here to finish off the painting. finish up the cloud by adding in a few lighter values at the end. Uh, if you want to bring out some of the depth, you can add some more light here and there in some of those already established highlights. So I hope you enjoyed this painting. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments below. And make sure you check out my website, timgonier.com, for online painting lessons and DVDs. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope to see you again soon.